All right, guys, come watch today as we use the tractor here to move some fill dirt. We're going to cover what you're going to need, some safety tips. We're also going to show you how to transport and spread that fill dirt. So why not come on in and join us and let's get going. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel, Hill Creek Outdoors. Got another video for you today. Um, if you've been watching the channel for any time, you've probably seen the progress we've been making here at the pole barn with fill dirt. Off to my left here, you can see where we've got grass. And then as we're moving on, we're continually trying to improve uh, this area. So our goal for this, you have to, first and foremost, you have to know the importance of what fill dirt is and what it can do. It can help a structure to where things aren't falling out. It can also help with slopes. So that is our goal in this project, mainly making a uh, easier slope to where we can utilize a mower and get up in there and mow the grass. Also, it gives you the ability of where if you step off from the pole barn gravel or later someday if we get concrete there, it's not that difficult to walk down the hill. It's a nice, easy grade. So that's our goal. Um, we are going to cover some different uh, tips and, and a whole bunch of different things in this video. So make sure you stay tuned. But I just want to say a special thanks to you guys. We couldn't do this without you. Make sure you hit that bell notification so you know when you we post up another video. Um, we truly appreciate it. Also hit that like and subscribe button because you guys are what it's all about. Our goal on the channel here is to provide you information so it can make you better and give you something of value. So let's go ahead and get into the video. All right, so moving on to a few safety precautions and safety tips that I want to give you guys before you do any of this type of work is first and foremost, one thing that's probably the most important is rear ballast weight. If you don't have rear ballast weight on your tractor, then it's going to be counterproductive because you're going to be way too top heavy in the front. So make sure you're putting that uh, rear ballast on there. I don't care what you use. Maybe you have a ballast box, um, rear suitcase weights, which that's what we have. We have 70 pound rear suitcase weights. So we're going to throw eight of these on here. We also have our tractor weighted down with uh, ballast liquid in the rear tires so that helps as well you could also add on uh, wheel weights if you um, and that's kind of a long-term thing this is kind of specific to this specific thing um, so this is what we're gonna do so whenever you're gonna get on your tractor to do any type of work you want to make sure that you're doing your pre safety check that you should be doing every time before you get on your tractor to do any type of work. Um, this could be things like checking your lines, checking your fluids, um, checking all your equipment that you're going to be using, your attachments, making sure everything is in proper working order so where you don't have any safety issues out on, on a job site or whatever you might be doing on the property. Um, last thing you want to do is try to use a piece of equipment and it break because you failed to check it before you did it. Uh, make sure you check your tires. Uh, check all your fluids, like I said. Check your oil. Make sure you don't have any debris in your um, in your screen up here for your filter. Get proper airflow. Do all those things because it's highly important to always do those safety checks before you use your equipment. Um, with that being said, we want to make sure we're going to go down here and we're going to check our terrain that we're going to be working on that uh, location. Um, it's highly important to check your the terrain that you're going to be working on to make sure that there's not any even uneven ground no holes if there is holes make sure you're aware of where they're at that way you don't run a tire into it and potentially roll into your tractor we got two places that we're going to be utilizing today for our ground and our area that we'll be working on um, we're going to be working on this back half here on the pool barn this is where we'll be dumping the fill dirt um, as you can see it looks pretty good there are a little bit of um Little dips and divots right through here, so we got to be mindful of that if when we're hauling the, that load. Um, we do have a slope right here, so we'll have to go up here, go straight up it to dump the um, dirt. So we'll show you how to do that. But make sure you are preparing your area uh, from where you're going to be dumping. Yeah, there's some grass in here, but we're not too worried about that grass. It'll just get dumped over. It's going to grow anyway. Um, so we know exactly where we're going to be dumping today. We're going to be dumping from the rear. On the left side here where that spout's coming down to where we planted grass right there on the right uh, previously. 
So that's what we're going to do. You want to make sure you mark your area uh, where the fill dirt's going to be placed out, right? Um, we already assessed the ground conditions here. So let's go over and assess where we're going to be getting the fill dirt from. All right, so here's where we're going to be getting the fill dirt. This is actually directly behind our house. We are trying to make this into a, a sledding area for the boys. So it is on a, uh, a hill here. Um, we've been grading it for a while, so it's fairly good terrain as you can go over it. There's no holes, nothing like that. There is one stump right there in the middle that we'll have to work around. But as far as rocks and things, it's not too bad. We've already taken our topsoil out, which you can see it's over here on the left side. Um, but yeah, it's not too terrible we're back here where we're going to be at the dirt. It is a uh, slope hill right here where we're going to be going around the side of the house taking things to the barn and so we'll have to be mindful of that making sure that we are going slow and always adjusting as we go next thing and uh that's very important is on most tractors um you're going to have rops that are adjustable to where you can put them down or up there are some that are just fixed but if you do have the adjustable ones make sure they are in the upright position that way, especially if you're doing work on a hill, um, you don't want that tragic event to happen where you might roll your tractor. Those right there are going to save you. So make sure you have your ROPs up. It's, it's highly important. Big safety tip there. So make sure you have those ROPs up. Um, and then finally, the one of the things that everybody can do is just have situational awareness, right? I know that you've heard that term probably in the past. Maybe it's your job or... Um, whatever the case may be, but situational awareness is huge um, when you're operating machinery, equipment, especially tractors, um, in any type of setting. So make sure you look around before you back up your tractor. Uh, make sure you're aware of what's going on um, around you as we just covered on the uh, terrain in which you're going to be working. Um, one thing that's going to help you is it's not going to, it's going to help you to not get injured or somebody else, but it's also going to save your equipment from getting damaged uh, maybe you're in the trees and you have uh, something sticking out um, like the old john deere 1025 r that we had used to have it had rock lights that stuck out um, you might hit those on a tree so having that situational awareness to where you can be looking around before you're moving um, always being mindful of your surroundings all right guys so the type of equipment we're going to use today um, and uh, attachments is going to be the Coyote NS6010. We're going to be having the KL58 loader on this tractor. This is a 60 horsepower tractor. It is a hydrostatic transmission. We also have the rear uh, quick attach system back here for our rear implements, along with the hydraulic cylinder link and our suitcase weights for our rear ballast. You can check out the video on this. Uh, we did a huge review on it and when we first bought it. So check that out. It's going to be up at the top somewhere in this uh, video here. But making sure you're setting up yourself for success. Um, we want to make sure we have the correct attachment, which we're going to be using a big bucket here today. This is a 72-inch bucket. And we're going to go ahead and get into how to actually load fill dirt. And we'll show you how that process. Best way you can position your bucket and all that thing. So let's go ahead and grow it right into it and start moving some dirt. All right, guys, so when you're trying to position your, your loader, you want to make sure it's exactly level or slightly tilted down. Um, that'll help you dig just a little bit, but not too much, and get everything you need. So we've already cleared out the, the top soil here. You're going to push down nice pressure, and you're going to scoop up some dirt. You're going to curl it back. You'll bring it up nicely. And what I call is a little shake to the shimmy, a little shake of the bucket back and forth. We'll level it out. Looks like we got a couple roots here, so we're going to grab them out. So a lot of these roots won't matter with what we're doing. Um, well, that's that. You'll shake that bucket just a little bit. As you can see, now it's level with the bucket or the full dirt. Let's go up and dump this.
All right, so now we got this uh, loader full, this bucket full of fill dirt. You want to make sure when you're transporting the the material, either that be fill dirt or whatever you might be hauling, especially on the side of a hill that you utilize good driving techniques for your stability. Um, go at the kind of an angle downhill, not exactly across the hill. Uh, make sure that your loader is low and your rear ballast is also low. Don't have them way up in the air. Just be mindful of the obstacles you might have to go around the rough terrain that we've already discussed when we are looking at our uh, areas that we knew we were going to be working in. If there was any holes, um, stumps, rocks, things of that nature. You're going around those. That way you don't cause yourself any issues. You also want to avoid any uh, slippage during transportation. So that helps with the bucket curled all the way back. So let me stop for a minute since I'm on a flat area. You can see that the uh, bucket is curled all the way back. It's not this way. It's actually all the way back. Helps that that material doesn't fall out. And you once again want to keep it nice and low. Uh, so you don't counteract that stability purposes. So let's go up here and dump this. We're going to show you quite a few dumps and transportations. Just wanted to talk you through it for uh, this one here. So let's keep rolling. All right, guys. So another thing as we're coming in here to do a spread some of this fill dirt, you don't want to go along the side of the hill and then dump it that way. You always want to go up and down. Give you the most stability. Um, that's the best uh, practice there. Also, when you're spreading your dirt, you want to make sure, well, when you transport, make sure you're in four-wheel drive if your tractor has the capabilities of being four-wheel drive. You also want to make sure for spreading that you're utilizing several different techniques. You're going to use the technique to make sure your bucket is tilted nice and slow, and you're going to gradually tilt and go backwards at the same time. So as you can see, it's starting to dump. And we're going to start to go backwards and dump as we go. So there you go. Then you're going to come back up and you're going to put your bucket back to level. And you're going to utilize your tractor bucket blade for leveling this dirt down the hill. You don't want to go too much, but just enough. And we're just going to continue that, that uh, process time after time. And we're going to... As you do that, if you do it that right way for everything, it's going to maximize your ability. And I mean, I see my kids in the way here. I apologize for that, but it's going to give you the ability for it to settle properly in an even fashion and compress appropriately. So let's go get some more.
right, so there you go. We got uh, plenty of fill dirt uh, put in here on this one side. I think we're to the point now where we let it settle, and then we'll throw some topsoil on top of that. Um, you want to make sure right before you're done that you look at it, you assess uh, how it is, see if you need to put a little bit more on certain areas. Um, I think we got it pretty much where we need it to be before we put topsoil on. Once we put that topsoil on, um, we'll put about three to four inches of topsoil on top of this, and we'll spread some grass seed out. But, hey, I hope you guys learned something. hope you enjoyed it. I'm um, going over those safety tips and all those things you needed to know about transporting and hauling, as well as spreading and dumping the uh, fill dirt here um, on a slope, obviously, for where our application is. So we couldn't do this without you. So once again, don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you guys continue to enjoy the videos we post. Uh, for all things country, until next time here on Hill Creek Outdoors, we'll see you.